Quantity ideas. Quantity can ideas consist of levy en masse. The young can serve reinforce. Oh, sorry, enforced service. Old and infirm. Mercenary contracts. Conscripted garrisons. Expanded supply trains. And the finisher. Levy en masse provides you with plus fifty percent national manpower modifier. This is a huge buff towards your base manpower pool, which then has flow-on effects to your manpower recovery rate, because your manpower recovery rate is determined from your manpower pool. Next, the young can serve, plus 20% manpower recovery speed. So this is a modifier which modifies the how much manpower you received based on your manpower pool. So it com combines very synergistically with the previous idea's extra manpower pool. So it is another very significant buff to provide you with extra manpower. Next, enforced service, minus 10% regiment costs. Units are cheaper to buy and therefore maintain. This helps you keep a large army from being economically crippling. Old and infirm, minus 5% land maintenance modifier. So an even, an, an additional buff towards helping ensure that fielding a large army is not economically infeasible. So, so far we've had two ideas that help provide a bunch of extra manpower pool and extra manpower recovery. And then two ideas that help you use that by having your armies be cheaper, both to buy and maintain. Next, available mercs plus 25%. So how many available mercs you have is a fraction of your base force limit. So if you've got a larger base force limit, you can have a larger base available number of mercs. This modifies that number so that regardless of what your force limit is, you're getting a larger percent of that force limit as available mercenaries. This encourages mercenary based man, uh, play. How do you best use mercenaries? You best use mercenaries in high attrition locations when you uh, need to quickly raise an army in a distant location or in a location with extremely high autonomy, which modifies the um, the regiment raise speed and encourages you to use mercenaries to help conserve manpower because this is the manpower, manpower, manpower idea group. Next, garrison size. Conscripted garrisons modifies garrison size by 25%. What is garrison size? Garrison size is how many thousands of troops are inside a fort. You need, your enemy needs to have three for every one that you have to the nearest thousand. Uh, so how do you use this? Well, if your forts have larger garrisons, it means your enemy needs to place larger stacks on your forts to siege them. This means your enemy is suffering extra manpower losses uh, when they're sieging them because they're suffering larger attrition ticks. Uh, it also means that you have a um, larger fort, as in your fort is more full of units, so it's much less appealing for your enemy to assault them. And they also provide an, a larger army when sorteeing forth from the fort, although that's a relatively l not often used um, ability. It also means they can serve as a larger manpower battery, because there are little sneaky ways in which you can use the sortie button to extract manpower from forts. And that manpower recovery for forts doesn't use your manpower pool. So you can play a very gamey game where you get a whole bunch of free manpower via abusing this in combination with the fort uh, sorteeing. Next, land attrition minus 10%. So your armies take less, less attrition, once again helping to conserve the all-important manpower that this idea group centers around. And to ensure that your attrition doesn't outpace reinforcement rate in high attrition lands and in locations where sieges are occurring. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not just saving manpower, it's also helping complete sieges that otherwise would be pains in the ass to complete and require lots of micro. And the finisher, 50% land force limit modifier. This is a gargantuan, I cannot overstate this enough, buff to your land force limit and army strength therefore. Basically, if you have a 50% larger army, so assuming that you have the economy to use the extra land force limit this side that the finisher produces, you effectively have an army that is 50% stronger. Mm -hmm. This is so much stronger than the like 10% or 5% that the other idea groups throw around. This is 50% more army strength if you can keep up the economy to run them. Uh, a larger army, aside from those obvious military applications, has flow-on effects to your diplomacy. If you have a larger force limit, you look 
and, and you're actually fielding that force limit, you look like a more attractive potential ally. This helps you keep... Uh, also, the rate at which you accumulate um, favours with other nations, with your allies, is, rate, is based on your relative force limits. So if you have a huge force limit, because you've got an extra 50% land force limit modifier, you will accumulate favours with your allies faster. You can then use your allies' manpower more often. Uh, it also helps with regards to your diplomatic interactions with your subjects. If you have a huge force limit, then you look like you have a much larger army than your subjects and they no longer feel like they want to rebel. They consider that their relative military strength is much weaker than yours. And the last thing that this is useful for is that it helps you hit the size of being too large to coalition significantly sooner when engaging in a world conquest mass blobbing spree. If you can get bigger than all the other nations in the world combined, which this idea helps you do 50% quicker, you can hit a point where the AI just sort of rolls over and says it's not worth trying to coalition you because you could stomp us all, and they start just hoping that you ignore them. <laughs> that if they don't raise their head up, that if they don't start being the grease, uh, the squeaky gate, that you won't target them first. So in summary, Quantity Ideas provides potentially the strongest military bonus in the game, hands down, in the form of an increased force limit modifier finisher, which, if you can supply your army, if you can use it all, is basically a 50% stronger army. It provides an, a series of buffs towards ensuring a high manpower pool and recovery, whilst minimising attrition, again, assisting manpower, and economic bonuses, minimising the army cost of having a large army to help ensure that you are able to make effective use of all the manpower you've got and the increased force limit finisher. Quantity ideas are best used in a wide expansionistic gameplay, which will get the most benefit from the multi-fronting ability and the largest base from which the manpower and force li limit bonuses, which are percent based, can be leveraged. That said, when used for taller, less expansionistic play, it helps diplomatically for attracting allies, discouraging enemies, and keeping subjects loyal. Additionally, having enough manpower, so if you're playing a tall game but using this to get extra manpower, you can start spending your manpower more freely to earn more uh, favours in wars. If you engage in an enemy, in one of your allies calls you into a war and you spend a lot of manpower on it, you complete a lot of sieges for them, you engage in a lot of battles, then you will earn extra favours, and then you can use your allies who owe you those favours in future wars. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just um, the obvious military and the obvious very strong military bonus that this provides, but has a bunch of flow-on effects to diplomacy as well, and is suitable for both, or is useful for both, tall and wide play, even though it is strongest uh, for wide play.